Hey, it's Austin Rothschild from Mr. Hughes 5th period AP Euro class, and today we'll be checking out chapter 28, but more specifically, the search for political stability in the Great Depression. The search for peace and political stability, starting with Germany and the Western powers. Under the Allies' naval blockade and threat to extend military occupation from the Rhineland, Germany's new government was forced to sign the Treaty of Versailles in 1919. By the end of 1919, France wanted to stress the harsh, harsh elements of the Treaty of Versailles. Expected costs of reconstruction were staggering, and like Great Britain, France had also borrowed large sums of money from the U.S. during the war. <clears throat> Betrayed by the U.S., many French leaders saw that large reparation payments could hold down Germany indefinitely and archive its goals for, of security. After the war, a healthy, prosperous Germany appeared to be essential. The British were suspicious of France's army and their foreign policy. In 1921, France signed a mutual defense pact with Poland and associated itself with an alliance that joined Czechoslovakia, Romania, and Yugoslavia against defeated and bitter Hungary. The Allied, reparation, the Allied reparations in, in April 1921 announced that Germany had to pay a huge reparation payment. In 1922, the Weimar Republic announced its inability to pay more and proposed a moratorium. On, three, on reparations for three years. The British were willing to accept this offer, but the French were not and led their legalistic Prime Minister Raymond Poincar decided they either had to call Germany's bluff or see the entire peace settlement through to dissolve France's disadvantage. Despite strong British protests, France and, Al France and ally Belgium decided to pursue a firm policy and in 1923 French and Belgium armies began to occupy the Ruhr district, heartland of the industrial part of Germany, creating a serious international crisis of the 1920s. The Occupation of the Ruhr The strategy for Poincaré and the French supporters was simple. Since Germany was resisting to pay reparations in hard currency or gold, France and Belgium would collect reparations in kind, like coal, steel, machinery. The German government ordered the people of the Ruhr to stop working and start passively resisting the French occupation. In 1923, Gustav Stroessmann assumed leadership of the government and adopted a comprising attitude calling off the passive resistance in the Ruhr and in October agreed in principle to pay reparations and asked for a re-examination of Germany's ability to pay them. Poincaré accepted becoming increasingly unpopular. In Germany and France, power was passing to the moderates and after five years of hostility and tension, culmination in a kind of undeclared war in the Ruhr, in 1923, Germany and France decided to compromise and give the co corporation a try. Hope in foreign affairs between the time period of 1924 to, through 1929. The Reparations Commission appointed an international committee of financial experts headed by an American banker, Charles D. G. Dawes, to re-examine reparations in Germany. The plan, also known as the Dawes Plan, having been accepted by France, Germany, and Britain, stated that German reparations were to be reduced. The German Republic experienced a spectacular economic recovery, and Germany easily paid over $1.3 billion in reparations in 1927 and 1928. Schroessmann had suggested a treaty with France outside Briand, and by this treaty, Germany and France pledged to accept their common border, and both Britain and Italy agreed to fight either country if they invaded each other. In 1926, Germany joined the League of Nations, where Schroessmann continued his peace offensive, quote, and in 1928, 15 countries signed the Kellogg-Briand Pact, which condemned and renounced war as an instrument of national policy. The pact grew out of a suggestion by Briand and France, and the United States renounced the possibility of war between their two countries. Secretar Secretary of State Frank Kellogg had proposed a multinational pact. Optimism resisted on hope that the United States would accept it, its responsibilities as a world power and contribute to stability. The Hope in the Democratic Government In Germany in, the 19, in 1923, communists momentarily entered provi provincial governments and in November, a nobody named Adolf Hitler proclaimed a National Socialist Revolution, but Hitler's plot to seize control of the government was poorly organized and easily crushed. Hitler was sentenced to prison and as well while he was there wrote the book Mein Kampf, also known as My Struggle. Throughout the 1920s, 
Hitler's National Socialist Party attracted support from only a few from few anti-Semitists, ultra-nationalists, and disgruntled ex-servicemen. Democracy seemed to take root in the Weimar Republic, and the economy boomed. The moderate businessmen were convinced that the economic prosperity demanded good relations with the Western powers and supported parliamentary government at home. Although elections were held regularly, there were political divisions in England. In 1924 and 1929, the Labour Party under Ramsay MacDonald governed the country. In 1922, Britain granted Southern Catholic Ireland full autonomy after a bitter guerrilla war between the two countries, thereby removing an other source of pure friction. Now, moving on to the Great Depression. To characterize the Great Depression, the Depression of 1929 through 1939 was a worldwide and long la and long lasting. It caused many to turn to radical solutions. Uh, the, depression, the depression began with the American stock crash of October 1929. Net investment in factories and farms fell while share prices soared. Many investors and speculators had bought stocks on the margin, which means they were paying only a small uh, part of the purchase price and borrowing them from their stockbrokers. When prices started to fall, thousands of people had to sell their st had to sh sell their shares at once to pay for their brokers and a financial panic started. <laughs> financial crisis led to a decline in production in first the United States and then in Europe and an unwise turn in protective tariffs. The absence of international leadership and poor national economic policies added to the depression. The Great Depression led inevitably to mass unemployment. As production decreased, workers lost their jobs and had no money to buy goods, which cut production even more. Most workers lost their jobs due to the inability of their companies having the sufficient salaries to even pay them. Mass unemployment also caused great and psychological problems through uh, people of society, which uh, led to violent events such as uprisings and or riots or revolts. The New Deal in the U.S. Roosevelt's proposed by Theodore Roosevelt, his goal was to preserve capitalism through reform, especially by giving aid to the farmers by raising agricultural prices and restricting production via his Agricultural Adjustment Act of 1933. The NRA in the U.S. Government intervention in and regulation of the economy first took place through the National Recovery Administration, also known as the NRA, whose goal was to reduce competition and fix prices and wages for everyone's benefit. The NRA was declared unconstitutional in 1935, and Roosevelt decided to attack the problem of mass unemployment directly by using the federal government to employ as many people as possible. The Work Projects Administration in 1935 employed millions of people throughout the U.S. It was very popular and helped, check and th and helped to check the threat of social revolution. The president's wife, Eleanor Roosevelt, humanized the New Deal for millions of struggling Americans. Other social measures, such as the Social Security and government support for labor unions, also ease the hardships of the Great Depression. The NRA helps, however, but it did not help enough with the Great Depression and the people. Although the New Deal helped, it failed to pull the United States out of the Depression. Some believe Roosevelt should have nationalized the industry so that the national ec economic planning could have actually worked. Many economists argue that the New Deal did not put enough money into the economy through deficit financing. Although the, the Great Depression was not limited to the U.S., it was also spread into other places around the world, as thus stated before, it was a worldwide uh, crisis. And moving on to the Scandinavian response, well, the Scandinavian re response was backed by a strong tradition of community cooperation socialist parties were firmly established in Sweden and Norway in the 1920s. Deficit spending to finance public works and create jobs was used to check unemployment and revive the economy after 1929. Scandinavia's welfare, welfare socialism, do, though dependent on a large bureaucracy and high taxes, offered an appealing middle way between capitalism and communism or fascism in the 1930s. Other places such as Britain and France had other uh, ways to cope and deal with the depression. Britain's concentration on its national market aided its economy recovery so that by 1937, production had grown by over 20% than it previously was. Government instability in France presented recovery and needed reform. 
The Socialists, led by Blum, became the strongest party in France and its popular front government demanded the New Deal type reforms. France was drawn to the brink of the Civil War and Blum was forced to resign in 1937, leaving the country to drift aimlessly.